So for those that haven't been aware, Spectral Wounds has a new album coming out, Songs of Blood and Mire. I'm here today with Illusory of Spectral Wounds to talk about not the album, not the band, but some of the records that he has on high rotation at his lovely home. Uh, I'm sure that once this record comes out, a lot of people are going to have this album on high rotation as well. So there's always that. Uh, wel welcome to the channel. Thank you very much for taking the time. Thanks for talking to me. So uh, I got the list of, of the four records that you've been listening to uh, quite a bit. Two are fairly recent. I mean, two are from this year, uh, mm -hmm. two releases from this year. Uh, two others are a little bit a little bit older, if you will. And mm -hmm. um, out of the out of the four, uh, I knew one. I didn't know the others. So this was actually kind of cool because now I discovered some bands that I had never heard of uh, before. So I feel like I, uh, I I I gained some knowledge just by uh, even before I sat down with you. I already gained some knowledge. So let's talk about these records individually and why they're in such high rotation. And maybe you know what kind of impact have they had on you? Uh, as a musician and, and perhaps impact on on what you do with with spectral wound uh let's start off with with uh Halus, uh excerpts from the past that uh, one was it, it is i've never heard of them before i mean this is a debut record uh i know i think they had one right before that i, I think, think it was I, I think, think it was, was an ep or something or a demo album or something because i think this was the debut Okay, possibly. I remember listening to the first release they had, and it was more uh, straightforward. It was it didn't go as like progressive. It was more rock based, and it was still good, but it wasn't wasn't exactly what I was looking for. But uh, mm -hmm. excerpt is definitely the ten on ten, one of the best records of the past couple of years for sure. Yeah, when I pressed play, I mean they're from Sweden. They're like a rock prog. Mm -hmm. um, reminding me a little bit of Pink Floyd, if you will. There's a little yeah. bit of there's okay. a little bit of that in there. Uh, when I pressed play on it. I was like, wow, this is not what I was expecting. I was expecting some blast beats and maybe some, you know, black metal or something like that. I mean, it kind of, the name kind of has a little bit of that vibe. So it goes in a, in a very different direction. So how did you discover this album? Did you discover it recently or did you discover when it came out originally? I think I discovered it when it came out because one of my uh, friends was obsessed with them. So every time I would go to his house for drinks, I would always hear Star Rider, like every single time for a good like seven eight months it was kind of it was kind of intense but uh afterwards it just kind of wormed its way into my head and i was like oh well i'll check out this band i'll see what they're like and the more and more i listened to it because you know i started listening to the hit song off the album star rider but then i was like oh you know this song is kind of cool and this song is cool so and then afterwards i just got really into the album and sort of obsessed with it and um we were we played actually hell's heroes uh, two years ago i think and um, when he was asking us to come, he was asking, oh, do you want to stay for the whole weekend or do you want to stay for your day? And we were thinking, oh, maybe we'll just stay for the day we're playing and then leave the next morning. But we found Hellas was playing. And we're like, oh, we, we don't know what day they're playing on. So let's just stay for the full festival just so we can make sure that we see them. It was super important. I don't know. I think for me, they have lots of similarities with like Thin Lizzy and maybe like Yes or Uriah Heep or... And it's like traditional heavy metal meets prog rock, and it's done in such a cohesive way that it never feels like pretentious or weird. They just flow perfectly together. And I don't know, it has like such thick, big chorus hits. And I don't know, it's exactly what I was looking to, to listen to at the time. So very happy to discover that band and to play with them too in uh, Houston. It's funny that you use the word pretentious because uh, when it comes to prog, Sometimes I do feel like it's so pretentious that it just goes over my head. Like I, I'm not intelligent enough to grasp it or to understand what the fuck is going on. Yeah. And these guys did not give me that impression when I was listening to the record. It had almost a very simplified way of approaching it, but totally. still be very progressive in, in their own way in terms of the way they present it. So it's almost like progressive for dummies to a certain extent almost i feel like they're just so good at it you don't even realize sometimes that you're listening to a riff that might be not a straight time like four over four maybe it's seven eight or five four or something but they do it in such like a it just a perfect way that it kind of just smooths itself out over time and i think that's kind of like the magic of that band they can mix these like almost thin lizzy like dual harmonies and then go into something that's a bit more i don't know like 
Pink Floydy sort of thing, uh, going to something like that, but it it melds so well to, together. You don't even really notice what you're what you're hearing sometimes until you really start to dig in and really like look at the guitar patterns and what he's doing and and this and that. I'm not a huge prog fan like at all. Um, you and me both. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's never really spoke to me. You know, I like Pink Floyd. I like Rush. I like Yes, you know, here and there, but uh, for other things, it just never really caught me too much and. I'm more of a riff based person. I feel like prog rock is more like a, I'm going to piss off every prog fan. I feel like it's less about riffs and more about a vibe, more about a feel for a whole album. A, a thousand, at least for me, I, I'm, with you. I'm on the same camp as you. I, I feel like it's more about a state of mind mm. in terms of where the music transports you, but not necessarily the, the riff itself or or a specific portion of the song. I, I feel the same way, and I probably piss off a bunch of people by saying that as well, but at least that's, that's my perception of, of it. Who cares? It's only me and you talking. We're both That right. is true. That is true. And the album came out in 2017. So is it... We're, what, seven years removed? Well, almost seven years. The album came out October 13th, 2017. <laughs> For you, did you still... Does it still hold up to today as oh, much absolutely. as it did when you first discovered it? Absolutely, for sure. I've been super into them since then. And the one after that was called Conundrum. And the one after that, I think it's called uh, Eyes of Time. or I I can't remember the last album now, but they just played here in Montreal not too long ago, maybe over the winter. And I went to see and got like the new record and stuff. And it's still great, but excerpts is going to be it's difficult to top like a 10 out of 10 album, you know? So even though they're records afterwards, I would really recommend highly, really good, but still excerpts is still the top one for, for me very easily. How was it uh, seeing them live? Because not every band has the same or offers the same sort of experience live from what you get in the studio. So how was that for you? It's actually super cool because some... I feel like they translate really, really well live. Like they sound basically exactly as they can play the songs very easily. You can tell they're really good, but certain songs, like there's this one really catchy hit. I think they put it on a seven inch too, like as a promo before, but it's called carry on off the album after excerpts off conundrum. And that song is more like a, it has more of a pop, uh, almost like disco feel sometimes on the record. But when they played it live, and I really like the song on the record, but when they played it live, it sounded a lot different. It was more, less pop, more rock based, but it had just a different feel, but the feel was still amazing. It was just, it was almost like I was hearing a cover of themselves in this strange way. So it was like there, I feel like maybe they recorded it and there's certain things that wouldn't translate the same live. So maybe they changed it up a little bit and it works amazing live. It works amazing on the album, but two very different approaches, I, I, I feel. But everything else was pretty much like note for note perfect when I saw them. They really can do it like very, very well. So you discover the the record and you discover the band by being uh, tortured uh, with it uh, yeah. every time you went for drinks with at your friend's place. So how mm -hmm. many people have you tortured now by forcing this record upon them every time they visit you? Dude, it's relentless. After I heard it, after I got into it, it was relentless for, for a bit. It was on constantly and then because of my friend he got his other friends into it so anytime we'd meet up in a big group of like you know having a fire somewhere in like a montreal parking lot or whatever every time we would meet up someone would bring like a little bluetooth speaker and we always some it would be on in the first two three songs i'm sure how last would creep in there and then maybe that whole album would pay, play two to three times throughout the night so people were really into it for a while i mean i'm still into it but i kind of you know you can't listen to the same album every day yeah 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 it's it's Years. you you need to let it breathe a little bit you need to let it sit for a little bit uh, yeah. for me this was a uh from the list that i got this was the first one that i pressed play because i yeah. had never heard of the band and i had never heard of the album and I was like, wow, we're in for a ride. I mean, if this is the first choice, I was not expecting something like that. I really yeah. enjoyed it because it also gave me a little bit of a, of, of a older vibe, if you will. Like yeah. uh, bands like Graveyard and Vintage Caravan do that older style rock yeah. really well. And these guys had a little a, a little bit of that mystique in there. So it works for me. I'm, I'm a fan of this kind of sound. So I really enjoyed listening to it. And I thought the vocals were phenomenal as well. He's a great vocalist too. And I think because he's not like one of those soaring vocalists, like he's not a Rob Halford. He's not like a Bruce Dickinson or anything like that, but he fits it in there so well. And he doesn't need to have these soaring vocals. He just like is 
perfect at the perfect place, perfect time. And the lyrics are great and how he enunciates certain things. Uh, I don't know. I'm in love with this band. Like definitely one of my f- top three favorite bands in the past like decade. I, I can't give them enough praise. Well, and then the next one I had on the list was Riot City. Oh, yeah. uh, and the name of the album was Electric uh, Elite, which, by the way, uh, cool last name for an album. And uh, they're from Calgary, which I I was like, wow, like, OK, like I was not expecting that um, because they kind of had a little bit uh, because I listened to the album first. And then I, I went and I digged a little bit deeper about the band and about the record. Um, and they had a little bit of the, like a new wave of British heavy metal sound mm-hmm. to them with some speed metal elements as well. Um, really cool. Uh, super dynamic, great guitars, great vocals. And then I go and I see they're from Calgary and I'm like, why haven't I heard of these guys up until, um, up until now? Uh, are they still around? Oh yeah. They're still, uh, they're still doing stuff. I'm pretty sure. I think I'm pretty sure we have the same booking agent for Europe. So I'm not sure if they're touring North America that much, but I know they're touring Europe because they're with Spectral Wounds with Doomstar. And I'm pretty sure they are too. So maybe they're just focusing more on Europe, but I'm not quite sure. I don't know the guys at all. Like, uh, so uh, I'm not quite sure what their plans are, or what they're doing, but I know they're a pretty new band. So I assume they're going to start like doing like bigger tours, maybe all of, all of America or something like that, hopefully. So people yeah, because can... this is their second album. Uh, the one that you mentioned, Electric Elite, is their second album. It came out in 2022. So it's not that... I mean, they're almost due for a new record within another year or so. So, so. Uh, so maybe that's why. But I, I feel like there's such a such a jam. Oh yeah, that's. Uh, I actually heard of them again. This was another like Hell's Heroes find because I heard of them before we played Hell's Heroes. But uh, someone, one of my friends here that plays in Profane Order with me, he was like, "Oh, you should check out Riot City." And I was like, "What do they sound like?" He's like, "Well, they sound like Painkiller Era Judas Priest, and their logo is a rip of the Thin Lizzy logo." So I was like, "Oh, that sounds incredible!" <laughs> I, uh, I, it sounds right up You're my sold. alley. So yeah, so when I saw them at Hell's Heroes, um, just watched them from side stage, and I was like, "This is fucking r- ripping!" And yeah, I got really into the records when I got home. Got a bunch of merch when I was there, and just kind of was one of those bands you see live and really, really sticks. That was no. one of the yeah, well, it was one of the bands that I didn't really know very well going into that fest, but I took away and really, really liked. When you listen to their music, it's almost like you could tell that they're going to have some sort of image associated with themselves. I don't know if they do or not, but you've seen them live. Do they look how they sound? I don't know. They do. Yeah, I guess they do in a in a way. I remember one guy wearing like a I don't know what jersey he was wearing, but he was wearing a sports jersey of some kind. I don't. I would like to think it was hockey because you know. Calgary. I mean, yeah, I mean, you would think so, but I can't quite remember now what he was wearing. But the rest of them just look like, you know, just metal guys, like leather ja- jacket, black pants, you know, typical, typical stuff. But I remember one guy wearing a jersey of some kind. So that guy probably is no longer in the band. No, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they might be huge hockey fans. Who's, who's maybe, the maybe he didn't get the memo. Like everybody needs to wear black and leather. And then this guy shows up like, uh, I don't know, with with a Calgary Flames, Jerome McGinley jersey, like a retro throwback. And they're like, what the fuck, dude? You didn't get the email? Dude, I would think that was sick, honestly. I'd be like, fuck my man. <laughs> I think that would be kind of cool to go a little bit outside the box like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it all depends on, on, on whatever visual approach they want. Because they have this, man, they absolutely rip. Like, yeah. I, I I love this, this sort of sound and this sort of style. Um, and it, it's just... It's just so energetic. The music has so much energy. The vocals are outstanding. The guitar playing is phenomenal. Like it's such a great record with so much to offer. And I'm just surprised, maybe because they're, you know, a smaller band from Calgary, doesn't get the same attention. They're not on a big in a big city in a big market, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is about them because every time I put it on, someone's like, "Whoa, who is this?" I'm like, yeah. "Man, these guys from Alberta, like." I don't know what bands they were in before. I don't know them at all, but you know, from like the, I really like their um, their album cover as well, the Electric uh, Elite one, and the one before that is cool too. But I think they have a great like look to them. I think their song titles are sick. They just, you know, they're a new wave of British heavy metal band on speed, basically like a Painkiller era Judas Priest sort of thing, and they just do it so so well. And I really don't understand why they don't get more attention because yeah, maybe, yeah. One of my favorite bands in Canada at the moment, for sure. 
I, I'm sold on these guys. And and like, I, I feel so bad. Like, you know, you're in Montreal, I'm in Toronto and these guys are in Calgary. We, we I, I feel like we should know more about our yeah. own product. And we don't. I think we spend more time listening to bands outside of Canada than we do listen to our, the own shit that we make here. Totally. That's always, you know, you never appreciate what you have. You always shoot for something else. And that's, you know, I'm guilty of that too. I'm always looking somewhere else being like, oh, this band over here is great. But you know, in Quebec, I think we're pretty like, uh, we have a great scene and there's tons of really good bands here too. So it's not as bad here. Maybe I can appreciate lots of stuff, but I know so many people come down for fests and shows here and they're like, oh, I like this band from Quebec and this band, like you have such a great scene. And yeah, sometimes I do take it for granted. I'm like, yeah, you know, there are like amazing bands playing at least once a month here that are from here. So like Outre Tome just played like uh, the other night and they're from Quebec City, like a good kind of Swedish death metal band a little bit, sort of. But yeah, another band that I don't think gets as much love as they deserve. And there's tons, there's tons in Quebec. There's, there's a lot of bands. Oh, you guys have a, I mean, Quebec is a little bit of Europe and North America. I mean, uh, you, you guys look at metal completely different the way we look at metal in Toronto. Toronto mm -hmm. seems to be more of a trendy city. Uh, and not necess the metal scene in Toronto, I don't feel like it's as strong as it is in, in Quebec. I think you guys have a way better um vibe there going on with all the bands that are coming out of there it's possible but uh even that aside i just went to a show near my house i don't know a couple months ago there was this black metal band playing here that's like sort of new and they were called conifer and they're really really good and um there was a band from toronto that was headlining actually and they were called knocklicked and they were you know i've known the guys for like a little bit but yeah they blew me away with their show like really punk infused black metal uh just vicious the whole time was vicious uh, like one guitar keyboards bass drummer singer and that was kind oh, of never heard of them oh well if you get a chance to see them in toronto they're playing some shows not clicked is their name like they just released a new album not too long ago really worth checking out like uh i was very i always liked them before but that show that they played here recently really uh really got my attention. Hopefully we can do something with them later on, play some more shows in Toronto because they're all good lads. Yeah, I discovered, I was uh, one of the judges for the Vakken Metal Battle last year, the finals in, in Toronto, and there was a band from the Prairies. I think they were from either Calgary or Edmonton. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. And their name is Necht, and they're like a black metal band that has this whole um uh what do you call it this whole i'm not going to call it gimmick because it's not a gimmick but they have this whole vibe of being priests of of this ancient civilization world that predates our own existence and yeah. and so the whole music is about that civilization and and the okay. whole stage presence is about that civilization i was like this is amazing like I, I i loved it because they, they almost transport you into this world that doesn't exist but what they're trying to tell you is that it existed before ours did. So, and I was like, wow. And you guys are from Canada. Like you guys are from the prairies. Like I, I just, I just don't think we do enough. And when I mean, we, I mean, all of us in Canada, I don't think we do enough to promote our own bands and our own product, uh, considering how much quality it exists here. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a big place too. Like Canada's huge, you know, in Europe, I feel like it's a lot smaller countries you can drive around the whole country in like a day or something like that. But Canada, like it's enormous. So I think we have a lot of cutoff points too. And maybe we're not, uh, I don't know, maybe it's more difficult for us sometimes to maybe bands fly under the radar sometimes, but there's definitely, I mean, Toronto has, um, has two mold. So they yeah, seem to be. That is true. Well, that is true. There is true. I mean, them, Panzer Foss is here as well. So, there, I mean, there's some, there's some good bands in Toronto. It, it's just that the the vibe in the in the city is not as I don't know. It's not as conducive for people to come out to metal shows. It, it, it's really hit or miss. I yeah. mean, you guys played in Toronto. Uh, the place Lee's Palace was packed. So, oh yeah, we were fucking packed there. Yeah, so that was a that was a great show. Uh, we'll talk more about that. But before sure. we talk about that, let's talk about another Canadian band on your list. And this one, this one is really interesting because they're from Montreal. I never heard of them. And I swear to God, when I saw the name of the band, I wasn't sure where the name of the band ends and where the album starts and vice versa. Because yeah. Departure Chandelier, I was like, that that is um, an outside of the box kind of name for a band. At least I feel. Yeah, I don't even think they're, I think uh, a couple of the members are from here, but uh, I think most of them are based in New York. Um 
so it's kind of a half and half but uh i've always called them departure chandelier in french and i guess sounds other better people, but i don't know which when i go to america they say it in english when i talk it in quebec they say it in french so i don't really know what the actual name is who came up with it but uh yeah uh they release like um uh, their album before antichrist rise to power and i was a bit soft on it i thought it was good but i didn't think it was like reached their full potential and now with the last one i was seen soldiers of fortune it's they, i mean the title the main like hit off that album is harder than a coffin nail like that doesn't get you i don't know what's going i don't know what's going to get you then because that's a fucking and, and the, the artwork is amazing too by the way oh, the layout's incredible it looks amazing it looks amazing the artwork is just like so catchy like it, it has this great visual aspect to it and i see the name of the band i see the name of the record i'm like i'm not quite sure what i'm going to get the way the album starts off has that really cool intro at the opening of the, of the album yeah. and i'm like what's what's happening here like i i feel like i'm being dragged in this whirlpool of sound and i'm not quite sure exactly uh where i'm going to end up and i was blown away by by how good these guys are it's such a great band yeah they're really really good and i feel like they have a for such a raw black metal band that mixes in lots of punk elements like maybe some oi too and then just straight up like old school black metal early 90s stuff they really have lots of earworms in there that'll stay with you for quite some time so they don't play very much i think they only played uh, i think they've only played one show i think their first show was in japan with Beharit a couple months ago. So, I mean, great first show for those guys. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to have your debut uh, show there in Japan, I think that's a great place to go. Yeah, me too. Uh, I was uh, tempted to go see it, but uh, we were playing in Japan the month afterwards. So I was like, fuck, you know, I can't fly to Japan, go see a fest, spend a week there, fly home and then fly back again. Like, you know, I got a, I have a job here too. So <laughs> it, I'm not going to lie to you. When I saw the name of the band, I looked through the track listing because I was hoping to see a chandelier cover by these guys, but uh, that hasn't happened yet. No, it hasn't happened yet. I, I don't really understand where the name comes from. Like, I don't know what it's pointing at, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. So I'm sure if you dig a bit deeper, there's some sort of reason in there why they're using this. Yeah. Because it makes you question like, anyways, the, the name of the band uh makes you wonder it makes you ask a lot of questions and if the idea is to make your brain work and think about them because you don't understand exactly what it's at all about then it worked already because mm -hmm. you know th then you're you're in you're at that point you're you're all consumed by why are they called this what does it mean mm -hmm. why is the art work like this like like there's so many questions to be answered about this record mm. and of course it delivers in the end like It has all the uh, you when you pick it up, you see the layout, you see the name, you see the logo. It's it's really like I found it really enticing, but then when you listen to it, it delivers on every song. This is like a really strong band, I think, to look out for, and something that I look for a lot when I'm looking at new bands to to get into. They have kind of all the things I like. I really like my like black metal nowadays, more infused with punk and I think punk and heavy metal, and I think you can see that on the new Spectral Wound too. Hopefully, a little bit more crusty no not so much that stuff like i was into that stuff when i was younger but it hasn't really done it for me like in the in, in a long time like you know i i obviously had like my phases of like well not phases but like his hero was gone or from ashes rise tragedy that stuff was always really big to me when i was younger but i haven't quite listened to much of it these days maybe his hero is gone yeah but as far as when i like write spectral wounds stuff i'm never I'm never delving into the crust side of things, mostly punk and especially heavy metal recently, for sure. Definitely. It definitely comes across on the new record. I hope it does, man. I it hope. does. Yeah. It, it totally, it totally does. Um, and, and to me, I really like that. Uh, it, but, but this, this album came out earlier in the year. So is this going to be one of your favorites for, for this year? Oh yeah. I'd say for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely top five. I would think so. Is it still in high rotation today? As it oh, was when it came out in January? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think I got it in January, like a week after it came out, the CD version of it. And it's been slowly spinning around because uh, I, re I really like to collect CDs more so now. Like, you know, shit's expensive. So it's I'd rather just like support the band and have a physical copy of it without having to spend, you know, like $40 on the album plus like shipping. When it finally gets here, you've spent like $65 Canadian. So it can be really expensive, especially if you're living on a bit of a budget. So I usually like to get the CDs more, but um, 
I always keep it in my CD changer and it always just pops back on. And I was like, oh yeah, fuck. So I think, I think it'll definitely be, if not top five, top 10 for sure, easily, you know? Now, another one that might be in your top 10 is Hell Butcher with the self-titled debut record came out this year on Metal Blade Records. Yeah. Uh, is that going to be also in your top list? I can't see. Maybe it'll get knocked out of there, but I can't see what would take its place because I was, you know, these guys were Niflheim before, or at least the main guy was. I'm not sure about the other members, but uh, I always found, like, I always liked Niflheim. I always thought they were great and I never got a chance to see them, but I would have really liked to. But they never, I always just liked them. I was never like floored by them. And when I heard Hell Butcher was coming out, you know, intrigued and like interested and stuff. But after they released a single and the new record, like there's a lot of really cool bands like this now. Like there's Hell Butcher and then another Hell band is Hell Ripper. These Scottish guys that we toured with before who released an album not too long ago who are really, really good as well. But Hell Butcher, I don't know. It's that like Motorhead motorhead infused with black metal like bathory celtic frost it's all mixed in there and it's just vicious like violent destruction might be the song of the year for for me the third song on the hell bitcher album it's fucking killer dude it's like overkill by motorhead but just on speed it's just fucking insane you know the funny thing about this album is it's probably one of the few albums that i didn't review on my channel this year that came out on metal blade um i, I don't i can't even give you a reason why i didn't i i didn't connect not that i didn't connect with it I, I was so busy that i think it just maybe went a little bit under my radar so i didn't actually listen to it until this weekend when i was listening to these records before our chat so that i would know exactly what i'm freaking talking about and i don't sound like a moron um so i pressed play on the record i'm like why why didn't i pay attention to this release like i, I know i received the album i know i i could have reviewed it and why didn't i listen to it it i, I don't know it's one of those things that sometimes you just kind of sleep on it. Yeah, I think there's like, there's so much music now. There's so many things getting released and there's so many bands people are talking about. And there's so many demos coming out and this band from here and like, oh, this band who are in this other band made a new split or, you know, it's you're overwhelmed constantly by shit. And, you know, for me too, like lots of things fall through the cracks. Lots of things I like put on the back burner for too long and then finally because you know like spectra wind is touring like a, a bit now like we're touring a lot and we're seeing like bands all the fucking time so it's like at some point in time you just want to just relax and listen to like you know whatever you want to listen to it's hard to be searching all the time for for bands i do it still a lot but it's still like you need it, you, it's impossible to keep up with everything so a lot of this shit is gonna fall through the cracks but I knew Hell Butcher was the guy from Niflheim. So that's what piqued my attention. I was like, oh, shit, yeah. that guy. Like, yeah, see, I didn't know that. Uh, and and the name wasn't appealing. The name seemed like almost like a meme. Yeah, totally. Yeah. No, I <laughs> can see that. That's what I love, man. That's what I love. Like, traditional. I was like, I was like, the name is not super appealing, <laughs> you know? Then it's a self title for a debut record, self title. I mean, you, you, normally bands wait a little bit before they go with a self title record. Um, because there's a little bit of connotation that comes with a self-titled album. There's a little bit of expectations that comes with it. Mm -hmm. um, so so there was all of this. Then I saw the artwork. I'm like, I, I just feel like this is going to turn out to be like one of those prototypical. I, I think that was my mindset. These prototypical black metal bands where like you, everything is so predictable. You've heard it before. There's nothing fresh. There's nothing new here. Let mm -hmm. me skip this one and move on to the next one. Um, I I did the same thing with Spirit World. I think that's what they're called. That cowboy crossover thrash metal band. Uh, I don't I don't know if you ever heard of them. I'm not familiar. I, I saw the album cover and it was a bunch of cowboys. It looked like a Clint Eastwood poster. And, okay. And I was like, I'm not listening to this. Like I don't just I don't have time for this. And yeah. then I went to see Sepultura and they were opening for Sepultura and I was like, what the fuck? I missed this record. I, I didn't listen to this record. Never mind the cowboy shit. They were fucking good. Uh, yeah. They still dressed like cowboys because I guess one of their first records was like a country or something. They went from country to crossover thrash. So yeah. quite, quite the departure there. But yeah. it, it just goes to show you that sometimes we judge the book by its cover instead totally. of taking the time to. And I did that with Hell Butcher. 
Yeah. I mean, it's easy to do that now where you have so many choices, you have so many options. You're constantly going, I don't know about you, but like me, like constantly going to shows, constantly looking at bands, constantly on tour or at fests and blah, 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 blah. It's like, it's impossible to keep up with it. So, but yeah, Hell Butcher for, for me, I like that. Like I heard the name, I was like, fuck, that sounds hard. But when I heard Hell Ripper too, I was like, God damn, that's going to be cool. Like, so that's why, um, and they had the Hell Ripper at the same booking agent as us. So that's why, uh, I saw the name and I wasn't too familiar with them, but the name sounds like how they sound. So that's why uh, we really wanted to tour with them. And, you know, great lads from Scotland, like great dudes, super fast, furious. And I think they really share a lot with uh, Hell Butcher. Hopefully two, the two of them can do something someday together. Cause Hell on Hell cool. Tour. Oh, yeah, man. Hell across North America. Yeah, yeah. Hell Hell across North and you, you guys could be on that bill. I'd love to. I'd love to. Uh, no, yeah. That would be a sick. That would be a sick tour. That would be absolutely amazing. Let me ask you: from these four records, which one has a little bit more, uh, more of an impact on on the latest album from you guys? Mm, I really don't know if any really have. It's it's strange. Like um, I'm trying to think. Like when I'm writing songs and stuff like that for Spectral, because I play drums in Spectral Moon, but I write a lot of the songs too. And um, I don't know, I had really specific ideas for each song. Like uh, it always starts off with one riff and it's kind of inspired by something else. And I can't say uh, any of them really, maybe, well, I mean, I guess a little bit, like to some extent, it's hard to say, but I think like Halas, maybe the most, even though we sound nothing alike. Nothing like it. But they have a way of uh, the way they put their songs together and these big kind of crescendo ideas they have that lead into like a big harmonies and the harmonies just kept building on top of each other. That's something I really liked and they can't they do it in like a really special way. So maybe that worked its way in a little bit more. And I hear I don't know if they like Thin Lizzy at all, but I, I really hear some Thin Lizzy when I hear them do their um their harmonies and these big uh these big crescendo like bridge sections and thin lizzy is one of my favorite bands of all time so i'd say i'd say yeah maybe hellas worked its way in more because i was listening to it so much and that might explain why the record is more the new structure wound record is more maybe heading in a more heavy metal punk direction old school a little bit i guess i don't know but i would say you know if someone were to ask me like oh did they directly inspire it i wouldn't say so but i could see maybe me being like unaware and sort of influenced by it at the same time do so you have on this list of of these four records that are on heavy rotation for you like some like your favorite records right now at this moment you have mm -hmm. two albums that are black metal and you have two albums that are not black metal mm -hmm. do you do you listen to black metal because that's a genre that you love and it's a genre that's close to your heart and mm -hmm. do you listen to bands that are not black metal because you need a little bit of a reset is, is that the the mindset for you no not really i mean i'd say um you know i love black metal but when i think of it you know like if you're listening to dark throne or shit like that or like mayhem like whatever if you're listening to that back then those you know the bands that we have now didn't exist and the style we have today didn't really exist so they were like more influenced by like Bathory, Celtic Frost, Venom, uh, Early Vader but I'm sure they were also listening to they had to have been listening to like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, maybe something Lizzie. I know some of them really liked to uh, I, I think like Fenris has talked about that a lot like him really liking Uriah Heep. So I think it just goes hand in hand. Like if you are into like black metal now, you, you know, you, I don't, I, it's crazy for me to think someone would be into black metal and hate Judas Priest. That to, to me doesn't make any fucking sense. So it kind of just goes hand in hand. Like I don't see them as too different to really. And I think if you're into like black metal, there's a lot that Hellass can offer that it's a totally different take on it, but it will give you a similar sort of energy in how they make their music. I think, but I'm always listening to a bunch of different things. Like I didn't put it on the list, but I really like this band from Ireland right now, Lancome. That's not black metal or metal whatsoever. They're all, almost like a avant-garde Irish trad music or something like that. Kind of if Swans was like a Irish trad band, if that makes any sense. But uh, yeah, incredible band too. So I'm all, all over the place with shit like, like, like that. I'm listening to a bunch of stuff constantly. 
And, and I think it's impossible for all of these influences for as little as they can be not to trickle into the record making process when it comes to you guys putting a new album together because you are or your art is a result of who you are. And and these four records obviously had an impact on you. So it, they may not have a huge footprint in, in what we're going to get out of Songs of Blood and Mire, but I think you're going to find some elements there, even if they're hidden. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I mean, there's definitely... You know, it doesn't just because a riff doesn't sound like another riff doesn't mean I not really influenced by it. You know, like Lankum doesn't really have guitars in it. Or definitely not guitar harmonies or any metal or anything like like that. But the way, the way they write songs and the ominous feeling that you get from it, maybe you would like to translate that into some form of metal. You know, it always reminded me of like a on Panzerfaust, the uh, Dark Throne album. There's one song on it that's like a blast beat song, one of the few like blast beat songs. I think it's on side B. I forget the name of it. But if you just take that riff alone and you take it out and you harmonize it and change the drums a little bit, you'd get like an Iron Maiden song. It would be very similar to Iron Maiden. But when you're listening to it, you would never think that. So that's kind of like the art of Dark Throne and like art of Mayhem too. Like early Death Crush does sound a lot to me like Celtic Frost, but when you listen to it, you might not catch it right right away. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same thing with Spectrum Wind. There's lots of like things hidden throughout that could be influenced by by this or that. But sometimes people tell me they're like, "Oh, this really reminds me of uh, the Spectrum Wound song that you guys made," and I'm like, "Wow, crazy! Like I never would have thought that, but I can see what they're saying." But for me, it was just like. No, never tried to do that, but it but it just happens sometimes because you know things stick in your head and you rewrite them in a different way, and maybe you uh, are more influenced by something that you didn't really realize. And, and when you when it comes to these bands and you've seen some of them live, yeah. does that influence you as well? Definitely. Watching a band like Halas play live, does that have a an impact on you as a musician and creatively? Definitely. It made me want to be a better musician for sure. Cause those guys are so good. They, uh, uh, I mean, they were just incredible. Like the drummer would held it down the entire set, like amazing to watch. And like, I don't know, that's the one thing that really like inspires me, especially living in Quebec. Like there's lots of bands here that are so, so good. And if you're going to play shows with them, you need to be at the top of your game kind of a thing. You can't go in half-assed or like, not really super tight or have like a shitty live show because these guys are just gonna kill you kind of live they're gonna be so much better than than you you really need to up your uh, up your game each show and that's one of the great things of living about here i think everyone like pushes each other maybe to be better because there's there's so much to choose from and if you're not that good then like why would people go see you you know what i mean but where we're here we have like a ton of bands that you can choose from that uh i think that that really inspires me, but hell ass for sure. I thought they were such incredible musicians. It just made me, I think the next day after I saw them in Montreal, I went and practiced drums. Cause I was just like, God damn, what a fucking I need to up my game. Yeah. What an amazing band. I just wanted to be as good as they were. Cause it looked like effortless when they were, were playing and you know, those dudes can shred. They might not do it on the album, but God damn, man, those dudes can shred. And, and speaking of live, uh, like I said earlier, I saw you guys in Toronto at least palace on that 1349 tour. Um, what a performance like i cannot speak for the rest of the tour because obviously i wasn't there but Thanks. for the toronto show you guys were the show in my opinion Thanks. and the place was packed by the time you guys went on it wasn't as packed uh afterwards but that's a story for a different video but to see the love to see the amount of people i i think there was a lot of people in that crowd on that night that really came just for you guys to see you guys perform and it was my first time and I was blown away, blown oh. away, like outstanding performance for, for a tiny little stage that you guys had. You guys could barely move there. Yeah. Uh, you guys put on this incredible show that transcends the music. It's like the, 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 the music and the show kind of became this thing that's a little bit larger than life. And I, I was I was just at the back looking and I was just like, my eyes were going all over, like scanning everything happening because it was, it was so entertaining to watch you guys play. And it, it was so, I don't know. It was so uh, brutal to a certain extent to see the music translate into the way you guys perform it. Yeah. That I, I, I think you guys are like one of the best black metal live bands that I've ever seen in my life. Like it was just 
Thank one you. of those kind of performances that it wasn't just the A and Bs and Cs. And do you know what I mean? Like you, you, you guys put, there's not many bands right now within the genre that do something like that in terms of the way you guys put a show together, considering all the limitations, like I said, with the stage, I thought you guys were, were phenomenal. How, how was that tour for you? The tour was awesome for us. I mean, it was it was great. Like everything went great. There was no problems any night. Like everyone got along really well. And I mean, you know, like I said before, having to like make sure you put on a good live show or you do a, like, a good live show. I mean, we were on tour with 1349. The drummer of 1349 for that tour was the Dominator from Dark F Funeral and all that. So, I mean, this is a, a legend, like in 1349 are legends too. So, and plus like Andy Christie's machine, I've known those guys for a while and been a big fan and Spirit Possession, amazing too. Like I never really got to listen to them before that tour, but seeing them every night like yeah uh i don't know if they try to but like the celtic frost hellhammer vibes are definitely there for for me but the tour went amazing and we just wanted to do as good as a job as we can do every night because every other band was so good every night that it's like we couldn't we didn't have an option to fuck up a little bit and so we tried our best to like keep straight and like uh keep the party until after the show Dude, it was crazy. And, and i'm saying this not because we're talking you can go ask katie i sent her a message after the show And I'm I sure to ask her because I sent her a, I sent her a message and I said the night got better with every single band that went on, but I also said on my email. But the night ended with Spectral Wound. Then they were the climax of the evening, in my opinion. And I said to her that what a performance. So as soon as the night was over, I sent her a message. I was like, because she works with all, with all, all the bands on that bill. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give her some feedback on on how cool the Toronto show was from you guys because you guys kicked some serious ass. I loved it. I thought it was a it was a good it was a good start to the to the tour because you know we didn't really know anti Christie's machine like I knew them as people through the internet but I didn't know them to, in person and I didn't know Spirit Possession at all and I never talked to 1349 at all so you're not quite sure what you're walking into but like it was a great first show and everyone got along well and the night was just you know it was just killer every band was great and I don't think it let up for the entire tour every night that we played with these guys it was just amazing And then I got really excited because obviously I found out you guys were releasing a new record and I was dying to hear this new album from you guys. And I've heard the album comes out August 23rd on Profound Lore. Uh, once again, Songs of Blood and Mire. What an outstanding record. Thank you. I uh, a, really hard on this one, so I hope it comes through. I, I think it's one of those records for me. I, I'm really picky when it comes to black metal mm -hmm. and this album appeals to what i like to hear in a in a black metal record which i love the, the the riffage on this album it has almost more of a classic heavy metal style riffage to me at least that's how i how it comes across to me the vocals sound phenomenal the the, the overall arrangements great fluidity the album is really well designed in terms of the track listing that you guys put together which i think these days is almost like a forgotten art because everybody's consuming singles Yeah. But but I still like to sit down and listen to a record from beginning to end. Same. This album just knocks it out of the park. Doesn't matter what parameter you're looking at. I hope so. I mean, for the track listings and the lyrics and the song titles, you get you have to thank Jonah because he does all that stuff. Uh, he's a big. Uh, he's mostly. I don't think anyone contributes any of the lyrics or song title ideas. That's all his thing. So we kind of give him free reign and to do what he wants there and. You know, we can trust him to do it because it's always worked very well. And he has like a big ideas too about like a layout and design and like look of the album too. So he didn't do the layout for this album though, but he just has lots of ideas. But uh, Annick from Quebec actually did it. And she's like the singer of Tonnerre and uh, Cauchemar and used to do Wings of Metal Fest here. So she, you can thank for the, the layout, but definitely Jonah is like the one who the lyrics the song the album titles like he's the one that does all that stuff do you ever ask him what some of that shit means yeah for sure like uh we talk about we 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 talk about, it, we talk about it a lot actually and i was hoping you wouldn't ask me because uh because i was like i never want to he's a very like a uh, specific person when it comes to words so if you ask him a question he'll give you an answer but i don't want to speak out of turn and say something that he 
maybe like I misinterpreted it in our discussion. So if you ever have questions about the lyrics or anything like that, he, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to, to answer it. But I can't answer it because I know he would be like, oh, you should have said this or I would prefer like if it was, a you know, he has this like very like us, you know, he definitely thinks about the lyrics a lot when he's putting them to, together and they always have a big message and meaning behind them. And I wouldn't want to diminish his like ideas and say and say like oh yeah it's just about this i can be like fuck you man no it's not because <laughs> <laughs> my son and i we were talking about the record and and the song titles and all of that and i think we spent the we were listening to the record but we spent time while listening to the record trying to decipher what some of the titles m meant and, and it, that was such a fun exercise because mm -hmm. it got us into this into this deep abyss of of what could it mean while we're listening to the record so the two things start to intertwine and kind of becomes this matrix world of black metal lore if you will and i thought that was such a cool experience so if not for nothing it definitely adds a sense of of a conversation starter definitely i mean they're pretty like um dense in a way i don't know how to say but they're pretty dense and i feel like lots of people could get different things out of each song so it's sometimes interesting to see what someone walks away with whereas like when we start with a song we start with an idea and then someone you meet at a show says oh i really like this song i really like this passage because it makes me think of this you're it's always kind of interesting same thing with riffs too someone you you write a song and someone tells you it sounds like a band you never thought it sounded like but it's cool to see people's different uh, interpretations of what you're doing so let me ask you you got these four albums that are some of your favorite high rotation records are your expectations that this new Spectral Wound record will be in somebody's list come the end of the year, top 10 list? Do you have those kind of expectations for this album? Not really. I mean, if people like it, it's cool. And if people don't, that's cool too. Like for me, I'm really happy with it. And that's kind of the be all end all of it. Like us, we're happy with it. I think it's really good. I'm excited to show it to people. And if they don't like it as much or yeah, it's kind of like whatever you know you can't dwell on those things it's not gonna make me lose any sleep at any point in time I'm just like I'm happy if people like it and if they don't that's that's fine too doesn't matter to me they don't like them fuck them yeah I mean what am I gonna do everyone's entitled to their opinion so if you don't like it that's cool yeah I mean like you know a lot of people have bad taste if you don't like this album let me tell you this you have some serious bad taste because you guys have a phenomenal album um to me, if I was going to mention an album that's on high rotation right now, for me, this album is one of those records. I have like four or five albums right now that I'm listening almost daily to them. And this one being one of them, because I just think it's 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 such a great album because it's very unassuming, if that makes sense to you. It doesn't like to quote a word that you said earlier is not pretentious in any way. It's a mm -hmm. very like almost like blue color hardworking style record that you guys put together that I think has so it, it's a lot more layered and is a lot more texture than I was expecting coming in okay yeah I mean I don't know it's difficult to say I mean like it makes sense like the blue collar reference you've made because a lot of us started going to like shows and stuff like that like DIY spots when we were younger as through punk and things like that and I think that sort of energy especially when we play live has always come through a bit more and um yeah i don't know i don't know yeah i mean there, there's a couple of tracks on the record there i mean if, if you take them out of the context of the album mm -hmm. and you just play that song for somebody they would say it's a punk song because it's more of a punk song than it is a black metal song almost so you definitely see that influence on the record yeah there's definitely lots of punk influence on the record absolutely for sure it can't be denied you know when i was writing some of the songs i specifically wanted some parts to be more of like a punk feel or more like uk oi or something like that like sprinkling in these little things here and there that i think could translate well to the style that we're playing you know we can't do a straight up like punk song or straight up oi song but if we mix the elements well enough like i said about the dark throne album panzerfaust and how they mixed in that iron maiden song but it doesn't sound like iron maiden maybe that's the maybe that's the key to i don't know what i wanted to do for this album and I think you did it, man. I think you did it. Well, thank you so, very much for taking the time to talk to me today about, about these four records. Because of you, I've discovered three new bands 
and I've kind of rediscovered one that I didn't want to listen to, but now I actually listen to it. So, so thank you for opening my horizons uh, to these bands, uh, because now I'm going to be listening to them more going forward. Uh, and thank you for your time and congratulations on the record. I wish you guys nothing but the best. And I hope to see you guys back in Toronto at some point in time after this album com comes out. Playing oh, some on tunes. oh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be, be back. That's for sure. All right, man. I'll see you in Toronto then at that show. Deadly. Cheers, man. Take care, man.